quit after a month? If I wasn't listening to him, look at the opportunity that would have been missed. That's like the biggest part, I think, of my growth and testimony, like the insecurity in those areas. No, you are worthy. You are here for a reason. You have purpose. He put a name tag back on me that I would always like take off. You're right. Because he had never taken it off of me. Welcome back to the Salty Podcast. This is episode number two. And I have with me here today, Hunter. Hello, everyone. See, Hello. I told y'all he'd be back. Here I am, back in action on the pod. Yeah. How do you feel being back? (laughs) I'm excited. You know, I'm thankful for this opportunity. Um, I just like to thank my family and friends. Um. (laughs) So today's episode is all about me. So I thought, what better person? My favorite topic. To be on here than my husband, Hunter. (laughs) For episode number two, because we might have new listeners or just people that have followed me for a while, just to kind of get to know me. Like, who is Devin Cordell? (laughs) Well, I feel like we've talked a lot about us on our YouTube channel, but if people are coming from TikTok or from Instagram, they may not necessarily know as much about us or specifically about you. Yeah. So here's where you can learn that information. (laughs) Really? Just like, yeah. Who, Who am I? So that is a nerve-wracking topic. I don't, Why? It makes me nervous talking about myself like that. Why are you like tearing up right now? I'm not. It looks like you are. My eyes are just glossy. They are. They're beautiful. <laughs> I guess I'll just do a little introduction, and then we're just going to dive into just a conversation, and Hunter will kind of ask some questions, and we'll go from there. I'm Devin. I am 25. My birthday is July 24th, 1998. Where's my other 98ers out there? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> my favorite color is green. I'm just kidding. Yeah, Hunter Green, actually. Yeah. We're being technical. And so, yeah, no, I was born and raised in Dothan, Alabama. I have a big family. Uh, my mom and dad, they divorced when I was two, but. With all that, there is a bunch of kiddos there. I have a lot of brothers and sisters, more sisters than brothers. I'm just going to generically say it. It can be, it can sound so confusing if yeah. I get into it really. Mm-hmm. But I think Sage came up, was somebody asked yesterday and Sage was like, there's nine of us. Mm-hmm. So that's including our two, our stepbrother and stepsister. So my mom has six kids one boy, all girls, and then my dad um, has three girls and a younger son, and then we have um, a stepbrother and stepsister. Big family. Yep. Big family. I would say I was a good kid growing up. I was kind of somewhere in the middle of everybody, so I learned what not to do from my older siblings. Mm -hmm. And then, so I feel like I was a goody two-shoes. I just saw them get in trouble. I was like, okay, noted. Don't do that. I was a rule follower. I always wanted to never, I never wanted to disappoint people. Still to this day, I think that plays a part in, I am a people pleaser, which I am working on that. Okay. Cause to an extent, I feel like it can be a good thing, but to another extent, it cannot be a good thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like I was, so I was a good kid. Um, I was a good student. I was smart in school. I mean, you might not watch some of our videos and think I'm very bright, but I have, what's the saying? Like I have, I'm book smart, smart, but sometimes common sense, I'm just like, woo, over my Mm -hmm. brain. And then I graduated from high school, married my high school sweetheart who's sitting with me here. I went to a community college and I graduated with a degree as a physical therapist assistant. I did that a year. And then COVID happened, got pregnant with Ivy, and then I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, and then I pursued social media, and it here we are. Wow. Now I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> Long story short, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what about your, like your sports growing up? Did you do any sports? I did. So I was, I feel like I never stayed in one thing, like 
And I do feel like having my mom, my parents having a lot of kids, it's not as easy to be like, yeah, you know, stay in this and, Mm -hmm. you know, so I didn't have that motivation. Wasn't as easy for you to like pursue something like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, But I did. I was on the swim team. Loved that. I played softball, broke my hand by swinging a home run. Didn't love that. Off of a bunt. Wait, that's not how I broke my hand. So sorry. I did have a home run off of a bunt. And I was like, I'm a good softball player. That was like my first game. So everybody thought I was good just because of that. And then I broke my hand by swinging the the bat and hitting the ball on my hand instead of the bat. Not good eye hand coordination. That is extremely accurate. <laughs> I played basketball, also very clumsy. I would fall just running down the court. My shoes would fall off. And is that all the sports I played? I danced a I little so. when yeah. I was l- mm-hmm. young. So I just dipped my toes in quite a few things. Mm-hmm. Oh, I cheered. I was yeah. cheer captain in middle school. Woohoo. Yeah. I forget about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was our. You like swimming it. the most, though. Swimming is, I love, I love being a fish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love that for you, hon. <laughs> Should we just hop into it now? Yeah. As far as the testimony part goes? Yeah. Let's do that. Were you raised in church? Did you grow up in church? And if so, or, okay, you answer that first. Okay. Yes, I was raised in church. I went to church mostly, ironically, now just because it's so reversed. I went to church a lot with my dad and his family, um, grew up Southern Baptist. And so we were every Sunday, go to church in our Sunday best. And then after we'd have like lunch together and stuff. Um, so I, I was in the routine of it. And then my mom started going to church too, when we were younger. And then really, as I grew up, I went, my mom stayed in church and my dad kind of left church, not he didn't leave his faith. He just left the the building. You're right. <laughs> sure. I went to church my whole mm. life, basically. Can you recall your first experience with the Lord? Yes, actually I can. Okay. Do so, you want to talk about it? Yeah, let's talk about it. There's one I remember when I was nine. But before that, I don't know how old I had to be, but I was very curious about faith, mm-hmm. you know, in Jesus and who he was. And because I was in the routine of going to church, so that was kind of getting it in my head. But at that point, it was just fun. It was just like a thing to do, you know. But I do remember having a conversation with my mom and asked her, you know, I think I saw a Sunday service. Somebody got called to the front and they accepted Jesus in their heart, whatever. So I was curious. And that's when she explained to me, you know, if you want Jesus to live in you. You have to ask him to come into your heart and accept him as your Lord and Savior. And so I remember that being young and I was like, yeah, I want that. And so she said a prayer with me and then I went to bed. And that then, was before you were nine. Yes. Right. Yes, sorry. Okay. But then, so when I turned nine, I haven't ever shared this story on here before, like on social media mm-hmm. or our YouTube channel. Right. It was my first time hearing from the Lord. I was sick. I didn't go to school that day. I was laying on the couch My mom owns a restaurant, and so she had already left for work. I was home with my stepdad. He was in the back, and I was sitting there. And, okay, it sounds so weird for me to say now because my adult mind can't comprehend it. Mm -hmm. But I then saw two angels. And it's so... You might be like, why are you confused about that? And I've talked to you about it. I'm like, it's, I can't even explain it. Right. Because. You start to doubt yourself. Yeah. Naturally. Especially being a kid, you know, like being a kid, you think back and you're like, oh, maybe I was just Just imagining that. Imagining. Yeah. And like, I even wrote a letter because mom was like, you've got to write this down. So even reading the letter back of, from my nine year old self, I'm just like, that's so wild. But I do believe like children are so. Like they have that gift, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's anyway. well, their minds, their minds aren't like closed off to things, right? Because like exactly. as a, as an adult, you'd be like, "There's no way I'm going to see an angel," right? Or you know what I mean? Yeah. But like kids, they don't know that they're not going to see an angel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they're yeah. completely they're completely open open minded to right. things like that. So, but what was really cool is, and this still. I remember this so vividly was what I heard from, it was my first time hearing from the Lord that I remember they came in and they told me 
Devin, you're going to go talk to your papa. Mm-hmm. And that's my mom's dad. If he's watching this, I love you. You know, I love you. But I was so, I was intimidated by him when I was little. <laughs> he, he was like that tough love, like, you know, uh, everybody loves him. I was like, absolutely. What? Can I pause and ask you a question? Yeah. You physically saw them or was it like mentally, spiritually, like you, That's what you know what I mean? I think it was, it had to be more mentally, like right. spiritually feel the presence, uh-huh. you know? Sure. But that's what's so hard to explain because that letter, like I wasn't lying then. Right. Like when I wrote it, like, cause like I said, I was a goody two shoe. Mm-hmm. I was scared to lie. I was scared, you know. Well, that's not something you would just make up either as a right. nine year old. Right. You know, it's so unfathomable now, mm-hmm. but like, I do believe in all that. Like I believe in angels and demons. And so anyways, it scared me Yeah. hearing from the Lord. Like I was like, what just happened? And so I went back there. I told my stepdad, I was like, I need to call my mom. So I called her and she was like, baby, I cannot even hear you. I was just hyperventilating. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I need to tell you something. I was scared to tell her because I was like, this is weird, right? Yeah. Who He took me up there to her work. And I remember exactly where she was, how I ran to her. We were in the bathroom. (laughs) She wasn't using the potty. We just like shut ourselves in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I told her what happened. And she just lost it, just crying. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I do? Maybe I should have told her this. I'm in (laughs) trouble. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And she just was like, Devin, you have this morning, I was driving on my way to work. I was passing where her daddy works. She said, I stuck my hand out and I was like, Lord. Please send somebody to talk to my dad. It can't be me. And in that moment, I believe the time, like when she did that, Mm -hmm. that was the same time that I was laying on the couch and hurt from him. Mm -hmm. And so then it made me even more scared because this is, I'm like, okay, this stuff is real. It was whenever I could actually feel the realness of the Holy Spirit and God at work in my young age mind, you know? Yeah. They, and then I started kind of, uh, saying just like, they told me it didn't have to be today because then I was scared. I'm like, okay, they said this, they said, you know, I literally, she didn't waste no time because my mom is a very spiritual woman. And that is, I have her to thank for, and my like grandma and stuff for all the prayers over my life. And, but she has led me to, being a woman of God, just by her actions and her her walk of life. She's never forced anything on us. She's always walked the walk, and that's what I've learned from her. Well, you see it. Yeah. You see her doing it. You see it in her fruits. You yeah. know, it's not something that, like you said, she forced on you. Exactly. But it's like, I see that, see that the way she is, and I want to be that way. Yeah, you know? for sure. So that day, she put me in her car. She left. We left immediately, and we we're going to talk to my papa. And uh, the rest is, uh, you know, I don't have to go fully into the story. Yeah. But it ended up being great, and um, me and him are tight. You know, like I don't know. I feel like there's just that special relationship there because mm-hmm. I came to him at such a young age too. And I think he saw that. And well, your mom didn't give you a choice, right? <laughs> well, she's like, baby, you heard from them angels. Yeah. We're going now because mom was probably scared of yeah. the, well, she better listen. Yeah. You know, yeah. that is just, I think in that moment too, it flipped a switch for the realness of God mm-hmm. to her, mm-hmm. you know? So I feel like it's, I knew from a very early age that. I just felt like I was going to have a bigger impact in the sense of, I don't know this. I never want to say, I don't want to come across as like prideful, but Mm -hmm. like a leadership role, you know? So starting at nine, like whenever, a few years ago, whenever I felt the calling on my life to pursue social media or, uh, it was very clear that he said, you're like, I felt like I was going to be an influence. Mm -hmm. No, had no idea it was going to look like this. Right. But that story and that time like got brought back up into my mind. Definitely. And you know, it's just always been clear to me. And so bouncing off of that, what you just said, how you've always kind of felt that calling and what you walked through. 
a lot of people don't know that you thought you were following or you you were following what you thought that the Lord had for you, like especially after reading that book, right? So you could share about that. Okay. And then also share about like the job that you had for a short period of time doing social media. And then it was like a obvious like, no, this isn't it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. Tell that story. Okay. I'm going to be kind of bouncing all over the place. Go ahead. Okay. In that, me saying I felt like there's always been a calling on my life, that hasn't meant, which you know, I it hasn't always been easy mm-hmm. for me to believe it for myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? I struggled a lot with purpose and identity, and I think the purpose is I never struggled with, okay, what is it you want me to do, Lord? Like go be a nurse or go be this or that. A lot of my friends struggled more with occupational wise, but with me, it didn't matter really what it was. You know, I'm sure at some point I was stressed, but like, oh, what am I going to do or whatever? But it never was a burden to me. It was more of my purpose in that purpose. I knew that as long as I worked hard and completed the job task that I was a good worker, you know, mm-hmm. and I would bring um, purpose to that, but it was like my actual being per- here purpose. Right. That's well, what I struggled with. Okay. Purpose in that. Okay. Now going into just the different, you know, I graduated with my physical therapist assistant license. I did that for a year. And so in that I'm like, okay, I mean, I'm doing, I'm doing a good job at it. I'm working hard, but I still was struggling with my purpose, mm-hmm. even though is, am I making sense? Yes. It's, okay. And so I try to be very in tune with hearing from him. And so I remember when COVID happened, I felt like for a few weeks, I was the provider, really. Yeah. Because you were still, what were you doing at that point? I was a firefighter. Okay, you were? Mm-hmm. Okay. But I was like the breadwinner, I guess you could Definitely. say. Definitely, yeah. And so. I mean, you were probably making like double what yeah. I was making. Yeah. So we were able to live comfortably because before I graduated, we were struggling. Mm-hmm. I mean, you were making $400 every two weeks. Not as a firefighter. That was right, something else. Something else. Yeah. So that was hard because I was like, what do I, how do I leave this? Mm-hmm. And we're going to go back to struggling or whatever, which I did have a piece about it too, because we knew what God had already brought us through in that struggle. And honestly, when we were making no money, we were so joyful still, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I'm sure there were moments of being like, dang, I wish we could right. afford that. But yeah, yeah. I just felt that heaviness, you know, that heaviness, you know, you're supposed to be making a decision or doing something and then you try to ignore it and ignore it and ignore it. So that was the time. And then as soon as I quit, Mm -hmm. it still took me after quitting, it took a little bit for me to be like, okay, that was the right decision. Mm -hmm. I struggled like after, because sometimes you say no to something, you feel, okay, that was right. But sometimes you walk away from something and you're like, wait, Mm -hmm. was that right? Yeah. And, you know, and you have a similar story with your firefighter career. So then social media, I was like, okay, I'm going to be a stay at home mom. I really want to be a good wife, a good mom, like with what I'm given. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't providing anything at that point. So I remember the crafts I made. I started making garland yarn and all of that because I, I was used to work right? and I still wanted to be contributing something. Well, you had a job like since you were 15 yeah, and your mom would well, drop even, you off, right. you know? Yeah. So fast forward, what, five years you had been working for five years and then you're not. Yeah. And so it's a. Right. And even before 15, like we always were helping at the restaurant right. and things like that. Okay. Then I was like, social media, really cool, you know? So then I got a social media job. I was like, this is it. This is, I'm going to be helping somebody else's social media and I'll be able to be an influence in this way on their platform because it, okay, wait, I missed a part Mm -hmm. saying yes to that job. That was, I was going through a season of waiting on what the Lord wanted me to do. Was this when I was pregnant? No, No, this is after we had already had Ivy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at that point I had started YouTube, all of that, Yeah. but it was just documentation, whatever. And then I was like, okay, I need, I feel like there's something coming. What is it? I was in the word. I was searching, seeking, just being like, Lord, whatever you have for me. 
I was reading a book called The Deborah Anointing, and I've always just felt a closeness to her. I don't know if it's because one of my nicknames was like Debbie and Deborah. Like y'all used to call me that all the time. Yeah. And so she's just a really cool woman of God. And I like reading about her. In that book, it just, I felt like, almost like it it was prophecy because multiple other people had came to me and prophesied the same thing. And then I read it and it was just talking about me an influence to many. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, Lord, what is it? Then I got presented with this job for social media. I was like, this has to be it. This has to be what he's talking about. Being an influence to many, like I'm going to get to be on here. And I did that. I was there. I was comfortable. I was there a month. And then I felt like this isn't it. Yeah. And I was like, I cannot quit after a month. Yeah. Was it a month or two months? It was a month. A month. A month exactly. Yeah. From when I started to whenever I told them I was leaving. <laughs> But if I would not, if I wasn't listening to him and listening, look at the opportunity that would have been missed. Definitely. You know? Yeah. And so, but that was, but that was a stepping stone. That got me comfortable on the phone, on the camera. It did. You just kind of brought up my next point without even realizing it is like in high school, even younger than that, I would say. Um, But definitely since I've known you and I mean, up until now, like one of your biggest struggles is like insecurity yeah so how do you go from dealing with that as your literally your biggest struggle (laughs) like i'm not exaggerating to being on the camera like you are and not only you know i would even say that it's different if with if we're all if it's always us yeah but it's not like on your you know you do everything so well um that's nice i know and i'm just so proud of you and i'm proud that you have like overcome that. I mean, you still you still struggle with it a little bit. For sure. I think everybody does a little yeah. bit. But so just talk about like how you were able to come through that, like to where you are now. In that season of feeling that pull towards that and it being clear, like you're gonna be influenced to many. I was just like, what? Because I couldn't comprehend that because I'm like, I have not put myself out there. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't do that yeah. confidently, you know? Right. I knew I would struggle if that were the case, if this, if that was what I was going to do, because like you said, looking back in high school and everything, I was so insecure in so many areas Mm -hmm. and the insecurity, of course, as girls, you know, physically, physically, you might have insecurities and stuff. I, I mean, I would say that you were insecure in like almost every area, you know, physically, you know what I mean? Emotionally, just <laughs> everything. I mean, I mean, I mean, literally everything. I don't know how else to describe it. Like in almost every area of things that you walked through every day and dealt with, you were so extremely insecure, which you hid it. Most people don't even know it. Like yeah. a lot of your really good friends from high school, I would be willing to bet, probably don't know that. Yeah. But you were, and you've grown so much. Yeah. From- well, it just goes back to... That's like the biggest part, I think, of my growth and testimony is because uh, it's like the insecurity in those areas. I'm <laughs> well, sorry. I didn't mean to get you all was... uh, flared up in here. <laughs> no, I wasn't intended that either. I didn't think that would make me do that. Episode I, one, guys, get ready. <laughs> or two, I guess. Two. Yeah. Um, no, it just goes back to, I think, just it's seeing the growth mm-hmm. from that because all of those areas of being insecure it just went back to my purpose and like feeling, you know, just pointless. Mm-hmm. Every, feeling like I wasn't needed. Yeah. And not that I wasn't loved enough or, mm-hmm. you know, like I was very much supported into by a lot of people, amazing people, but there was still just that. I think like looking back how I knew there was a calling on my life from such a young age, the enemy also knew that. And so also from a very young age, he went ahead and just started pouring lies into me Mm -hmm. saying, you know, you're not enough. You're pointless. You really don't have to be here Mm -hmm. kind of vibe. And that's whenever I went through a lot of um, suicidal 
parts mm-hmm. of my life. Yeah. Looking back and now, you know, you ask like, how did you get to this point of that's just the beauty of God and like how he literally pulled, helped me pull myself up, you know, and told me like, no, you are worthy. You are here for a reason. You have purpose and just spoke that to me. So just like he put a name tag back on me, you know, Mm -hmm. that I would always like take off. You're right. Because he had never taken it off of me, you know, but I just labeled myself as all that. What? <laughs> Dang, girl. <laughs> I had I didn't know to the extent of what I would be an influencer. Ironically, that's the word they call it these days. Right. I'm a social media influencer. <clears throat> and so at that point, at, it was just saying you'd be an influence to many, influencer to women around you. Yeah. You know, because and that is why I preach so strongly that we all are influencers, even mm-hmm. if it's to one person, because that person's going to go to the next person and hopefully be an influence. And that's why I love that saying a little bit of the right thing can make a big difference, you know, because mm-hmm. all it takes is one person to get to the next and to the next. Did I answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> I got so thrown off with my tears. Yeah. I no. wasn't expecting that. You did. Little crawfish. I am just so proud of you and how you've like, like you said, I guess just put your your name tag back on yeah. that you were designed for, you know? Yeah. Do you want to talk about like what some of the roots of your of that that you struggle with or Yeah, I think that's important. Um, because I feel like a lot of people might have dealt deal with the same stuff. Mm-hmm. It whether it took me a long time to realize what the root of it was. Mm-hmm. Living in this world, it's not perfect obviously. And so that is why there's such a need for encouragement and just why we're supposed to share our testimonies. Because if I can even share to one person, okay, look what God did for me though. Mm -hmm. You know, like that, it's so powerful and can help somebody because it, me hearing other people's testimonies is how I ended up being able to like, okay, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. It's not just me. So yeah, one of the big things was, is rejection, feeling rejection from such a young age. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate or no? Yeah. I, well, it's so difficult because I was very loved and that's why it's hard for me to even wrap my head around sometimes that like I struggled with reject, felt rejection Mm -hmm. because I was loved, you know, I was taken care of. I had a mom and dad who, you know, would do anything for us and family that also would do anything for us. It's not that I went through some tragic thing from at such a young age that a lot of people unfortunately go through. I think that's also just how the enemy works. Like, I mean, my parents divorced when I was two. And then I do remember, like I've talked to my mom about it recently too. And just, there was like a custody battle and it was like, it was unfair to us girls, like Mm -hmm. almost like we had to pick sides and I I didn't want to pick a side. I was loved equally by both. It's not that it was worse at one house or the other. Mm -hmm. And I think they learned that along the way too. It wasn't worth it for us to go through that. Right. And so that I feel like started it. Maybe it was almost like a seed planted, you know, like Mm -hmm. we're the reason they're, they're never going to be together. Right. Right. Things like that. Yeah. I was, I was going to say the rejection thing, you're right. Like you did have two loving parents. So like on the outside looking in people, people could say like, what do you mean rejection? Yeah. You know, but I mean, knowing you as well as I do, I can definitely see why you would feel that way. But I also think that that is just like to me, rejection and like going back to the insecurity can go kind of like that hand in hand, like one could cause the other yeah. and vice versa. So I think like that was your, that was your way of dealing with it emotionally. And that was what you took on from, although it definitely wasn't like they weren't rejecting you, but that's how you felt yeah. from some of the actions that were taken. Yeah. And so that's why you dealt with it the most is you're feeling a certain way. That had to be the root of it. Mm-hmm. And then everything's fine. But then it really was the rejection came in a lot 
whenever I was like a teenager, ironically, because that's when all the hormones hit. And yeah. Stuff. You know, people that I love and trust, like just seeing them choose other things over me or, and not, that sounds like. Selfish. Yeah. But it's, I'm, I have to be a little <laughs> respectful <laughs> yeah. too here yeah. of other parties. So, I mean, just feeling the rejection from. Some people's life decisions that weren't like ideal and didn't have you and your siblings like at the forefront right. of their of their yeah. life at the time mm-hmm. and that I think is what took a big toll on you. It did. And that is and there's been a lot of forgiveness since then and mm-hmm. I can I see past that. And really I just want to go hug the 12, 13, 14 year old me. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and just let her know like it's okay because really and truly the other party I can look and be like they didn't know mm-hmm. they didn't know the impact they had on us mm-hmm. or the you know they're living in a broken world too mm-hmm. and and that was just their mistake like we all make mistakes yeah but just like what you just said they didn't know how much it was affecting or bleeding onto that next person mm-hmm. that makes me really self-reflect and especially in Ivy's I life because yep. I never want mm-hmm. my actions to let her feel less than or that she wasn't thought of mm-hmm. because it hurts her, mm-hmm. you know? So anyways, feeling that rejection from that. And I mean, there were just things that like even at 12 years old that I just remember and it made me think it was my fault right? or it was because of me and then I went through all the stages of like grief and like anger and blame I was sad and so I self-pitied myself you know for having those certain issues right and 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 I took it on myself mm-hmm. and I'm like it's because of me right. you know yeah yeah thankfully I've seen the Lord work out a lot of stuff and make me not and realize now like I never was rejected by him. Right. You know? Yeah, that's great, honey. Great to hear your thoughts on that (laughs) subject. (laughs) What can you take that you've learned, like from the Lord, about how you grew up and apply that to being a mom or being a wife? That's a great question, honey. Sorry, it sounded kind of weird because I was like thinking through it as I was talking. No, yeah. I like the intentional thought process of it. Is there anything, any characteristic or any character trait or anything like that that just sticks out to you that's like, I am going to do this as a wife. I am going to do this as a mom. Yeah. Something that you may or may not, but something that you may have learned throughout your childhood that's kind of a part of your testimony that's that says you know i see how this happened to me in my past and i'm going and i'm going to do the best i can to you know break that generational curse yeah. or or just be be the difference that i wanted to see when i was a kid is yeah. there something like that and it's okay if there's not but is there something like that that you that you do if i just stay the course with god you know like mm-hmm. being in the word and truly working on my relationship with him. I mean, he's going to convict me where I'm wrong and to give a lot of grace, like to Ivy, you know, because her way of living in truths, Mm -hmm. you know, might, we might not see that and things that she's going to struggle with or that she's going to go through and how she's going to process those things. You know, I mean, cause say she came to us one day and was like, I felt rejected. I mean, you know, and like for us, we're like, wait, what? Like we've loved you so well. Like how Mm -hmm. I think just to give room for that of like, Mm -hmm. we're not going to be perfect ever. But even though that is somebody else's, their truth doesn't mean, okay, for example, the, my whole, my, some part of my testimony when I was hurt by a person and I felt rejected from them and Really, for years, it made me feel unforgiveness and anger and just, like, lots of emotions just build up over time. I took a lot of those issues. A lot of it became my issues that really should have never been my issues, you know. Mm -hmm. But now I can look back and see that person as, like, a child and innocent 
and just a human like we are and how we we talked a little bit a few months ago about like our parents and how it's different now seeing them like us being grown up and seeing them from a different lens of yeah you know they're they struggle too they go through the same stuff we go through they're not perfect not that this is like about your parents but yeah. or my you know parents in general but i was listening to a podcast and it actually was not it wasn't a christian podcast um not that it was the opposite of that but you know but he was just talking about from his perspective but he he was talking about his experience in having to learn to love your parents twice. Yeah. You grow up as a kid, and obviously when you're a baby, you don't really know. So you grow up and you learn to love your parents. You're like, okay, these people, like, provide for me. They, you know, do X, Y, Z. Like, you love them that way. And then once you become an adult and things change and you see, you see your parents for who they are. Yeah. You don't see them for the hero that you felt like that you felt like they were when you were a child. Yeah. You know, this, that's what I was trying to touch yeah. on. I remember you telling me that yeah. and us talking about it. I know. And I, I was like, you know, like, that's right. Like you see when you're an adult, you see your parents and the mistakes that they've made and that you mm -hmm. almost treat you. I mean, you, you love them like any other person at that point. I mean, yes, they're your parents and they provided for you as a kid, but you can't love them anymore with a childlike love. Yeah. That's just not how it works. Right. You know? So yeah, exactly that. It's like mm -hmm. I had to now uh hindsight, like looking back, I can love them, be like, you know, I wish I would have been less hard on taking on somebody else's stuff mm -hmm. and really making that my identity and labeled myself because of what they were doing right you know but it's because you grow up and you're like oh this is my hero and this mm -hmm. is this and and so it's different now i can look i can easily look back and be like they were just going through some stuff yeah i just happened to be there right. receiving on the receiving end of the sin and yep. so it was hard and you know i mean a 12 year old girl of course she's going to take that on and, you know, I mean, because that's right on the peak of when you go from seeing them as your everything right. into, okay, wait, yeah. they're... They're not perfect. They're not perfect. They're not a hero. They're not a yeah. movie character. You yeah. Know? So all that to say, mm -hmm. I, I will be able to understand better Ivy, you know, if I just focus on my relationship with the Lord, you know, yeah, and everything else will fall into place and just... Yeah. Love her for where she's at, things she goes through, get down to her level and be like, okay, how is this affecting you? Mm -hmm. You know, kind of vibe. Yeah. Because I bet in that moment, in those moments, if people knew, now some people are just mean. There's mean people out there. Sure. But if some people knew how it's affecting you, you'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. Right. I had no idea. Yeah. Did I answer that question? You know, honestly, I don't know. I know. I feel no, like you I, did. We were you just did. Talking. Right, yeah, you did. Yeah. Okay, I know this is about me, but what would you do? Like, what do you mean? What would I do about what? Like being a hu better husband or better dad, going off of things that you just learned, heard about me from my childhood. <laughs> like, can you look from the outside looking in and be like, okay, this is, like, what's your advice for me? My advice for you would be to do what you just said. I think if you follow what you know that the Lord has for you and you try to stay in His will to the best of your ability, I think that sometimes that can i don't necessarily want to say like limit your mistakes like we're being graded on our life i mean we are in a way from jesus right but that's not what i'm trying to say if you take everything through a god filter then no matter if it's something that happens to you something that happens to ivy or me or whatever you can evaluate that problem through the god filter and say okay let me take a step back and this is what's happening and that, you know, you just try to take into account other people's feelings and not strictly your own, Yeah, you know, which you do a good job of that. I'm not saying that you don't, but I think that that would be the opposite maybe of what you experienced. If you're doing something, how does it affect me? How does it affect Ivy? How does it affect like whoever else mm -hmm. that it may affect, you know, yeah. and make decisions in your life based on off of not just what you want, but what's best for the people that it immediately impacts. Yeah, for sure. 
Like even just asking you, like having those honest conversations because we get busy and just mm-hmm. to be like, how are you? Like, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Because then that could open a wall and be like, actually I'm not, yeah. you know, whatever, but very good. Thank mm-hmm. you for that. That got <laughs> deep, <laughs> I would say. So if there's any of our listeners right now that are feeling the way that you feel or have felt in the past the way that you felt and maybe have not dealt with it yet like you have, what advice would you give to them? I wish I could hug them. (laughs) You know, I mean, that's cliche. But the feeling of feeling not worthy to be here and to think that you would be the world, the place, everybody would be kind of just better off without you. Like, you really wouldn't be missed. And it's not like even an attention thing. It's just like, yeah, it's okay mm-hmm. that I'm not here. That is a lie. Like you have purpose. You were designed to be here. This is a little silly, but think about when you make a baby. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'd say this a lot. It's like... I don't know where you're going with this. I know. I'm trying to think of how to make it not <laughs> um <laughs> weird. You know how when the sperm meets the egg? Yeah. There's millions. Oh, uh, okay. And millions. Yeah. Just swim into the egg. Okay. (laughs) Like when I think Ivy, I'm like, Ivy? She won. Won. You know? Mm -hmm. Like you won. Like you were first out of all those millions (laughs) of things. Is this okay to say? I mean, yeah. Like that is so, to me, unfathomable. Like what? Like the science behind that? Mm -hmm. And so to know you were so uniquely made and designed and you have purpose if you just dig into it and realize that and like go to god about it you know don't go Mm -hmm. to your i mean it's good to talk to people about it i had a lot of help and talked to a lot of people when i was in that state but the only thing that made me feel like i had purpose and it wasn't a fading purpose because a lot of worldly things can fix it fix that feeling you know Mm -hmm. dopamine little temporary fixes or whatever. The only true thing that made me feel like, okay, I'm supposed to be here is God. Yeah. You know, and to like dig into that and made me feel like I was uniquely made and created for this. And even if it's for one person, Mm -hmm. one person, you know, Mm -hmm. I just, you're loved and you are enough. And there are people that love you. And I feel like I need to say too, if anybody is, having suicidal thoughts that's listening right now, please go seek help. Yeah. That was big. I talked to my doctor. And so I can't say all that without saying like, make sure to go talk to your doctor and talk to people, tell someone around you. There's a lot of people and things that are out there to help Mm -hmm. with that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just want to add to that. Yeah. You definitely do have a purpose. Everybody on this earth has some kind of purpose because I've struggled with that too. I know. We're going to get into that. In one of the episodes. Are we? Yeah, we are. I'm going Sheesh. to interview you. Okay. Because I think that's very important. I think a lot of people will struggle struggle with their purpose. Yeah. In the fact like, I'm just coming out of that, honestly. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. Like, I'm still kind of, eh, do I? You know. Well, has this conversation helped you at all? I mean, yeah. I, I mean, a little bit, but it wasn't, it was more about your testimony, not, you know, this yeah. last part of the, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to get into yours in another episode. So, <laughs> anyways, thank you all for coming on here and listening. Um, thank you all for being a part of the Salty Podcast. You can give us a review. You can leave comments. Give us some love. Um, if there's any topics that you want to hear or guests that you want on here, you can let us know. But, yeah, hope you have a blessed day. Should we say bye together? If you want to. Okay, one, two, three. Bye. bye. <laughs> Thank you.